in a child's needs. laundry it's finished i'm about to start eating lunch i've got my usual bagel scrambled eggs with sriracha on it and today i have a side of frozen mango and i'm gonna watch um under the banner of heaven on hulu i wanted to just pop in to say hello i woke up an hour past my alarm i didn't really get to do the workout that i had been planning and i wanted to get back into jump roping so i just did a morning flow for yoga i'm not really sure how this vlog is going to work whether or not it's going to come into fruition because i totally forgot that i might need an upload during the time that i'm away i do want to read night bus today by zuo ma i don't really know anything about it just that it is by a underground chinese cartoonist it has a little bit of magical realism in it i want to read at least one novel this is only going to be for a few days i am bitten alive by mosquitoes i do have 16 bug bites on one leg love that for me i'm gonna eat lunch and i will check in later finally finished adding the subtitles to my video for this week and i was going to take a break by reading night bus and then going to return some books at the library but i have a bunch of books to actually pick up and though the library doesn't close until eight o'clock i kind of just want to take a little bit of a walk even though it's it's a short one um just to stay away from screens a little bit let's go pick up some books i do have a little tiny feeling that i might come back with more books than planned like I might browse in the graphic novel section again. I ended up having six books to pick up, so I didn't browse at all. I will be reading some of these throughout this vlog just to catch up a little bit before I head off on my family vacation to Spain for a week because clearly I cannot bring that many books in one carry-on. I've got Aqu Aquacorn Cove, a little sweet little graphic novel. This author, Katie O'Neill, also wrote The Tea Dragon Society, which I thought is so, so cute. The continuation from last week's vlog, Ghost in LA Volume 2, which I will definitely be reading. Lock and Key by Joe Hill, Gabriel Rodriguez, and Jay Fotos. I forgot that I had uh, put this on hold. As for books, I've got Hyde by Kirsten White, which is Lala's book club pick. Crooked Hallelujah by Kelly Jo Ford, which is John and E's book club pick. And then a nonfiction that I had to return because I didn't get to read it. It's Ace, What Asexuality Reveals About Desire, Society, and the Meaning of Sex by Angela Chen. I finished watching Under the Banner of Heaven. It's based off of a true crime novel of the same name by John Krakauer. It's about the murder of a young woman and her 15-month baby within the Mormon community. And I also finished reading Night Bus. It's like 400 pages. It's so much longer than I had thought. And it's very trippy. I'm very confused. I couldn't even really tell you what this book is about. So I'm just going to read what it says on goodreads so this book is translated journey through the countryside in this magical realist debut from an underground chinese cartoonist in night bus a young woman wearing round glasses finds herself on an adventurous late night bus that constantly makes detours through increasingly fantastical landscapes meanwhile a young cartoonist returns home after art school and tries his hand at becoming a working artist while watching over his aging grandmother whose memory is deteriorating night bus blends autobiography horror and fantasy into a vibrantly detailed surreal world that suggests a distinct talent surveying his past. I have no idea what to rate it because I just felt really confused. So I'm not going to give this a rating. I definitely do want to still read a book before bed. So I don't know if I want to get into one of these graphic novels that I borrowed today or start with a novel that I can hopefully finish tomorrow during my morning shift at work, which is an adult male male romance. And now I'm only six books behind on my reading goal.
Last night, before tucking myself into bed, I did read Aqua Corn Cove and I'm giving it four stars. It had a really important message about treating the earth kindly and taking only what you need and making sure to give back and cleaning up after yourself um, especially the ocean so it was a really sweet book i also really love the art style um, of katie o'neill and just now i read and finished ghosted in la volume 2 which i'm also giving three stars like i did volume 1 the story is coming along a little bit more and it's getting a little bit more complex so i'm definitely interested to see where it's going to go especially because it involves ghosts then i was going to start in with lock and key and i was about to input it into goodreads only to realize that this is book six so i'm going to promptly return this and put the first book on hold and then i'm going to start the charm offensive next this is about dev who is one of the producers in a reality dating show called ever after similar to i think the bachelor there's charlie who is the prince charming or the bachelor and he doesn't believe in true love but agrees to be on the show to fix his image but he's like really bad on camera he is stiff and very anxious and he doesn't know how he can possibly date 20 women on national television dev is trying to get charlie to open up but I guess they have better chemistry together than with any of the women. And because of Night Bus having been 400 pages, I read almost 500 pages last night and my grand total I think is 603 pages because of Ghosted in LA. I'm almost all ready to go out to meet Coda and I've been reading The Charm Offensive. There are a few shows that I want to watch, but I have kept it together because I kind of want to manage to read 250 pages today because I was able to do over that yesterday. Like this month has already been so much better than last month because this is now my 10th or 9th book of the month and I have been enjoying it so much because I read Ghosted in LA. That's too a lot, 112 pages i only need to read about 138 but i'm already 125 pages into this and i'll definitely get to read more on the commute and if i surpass that amazing it is so easy to read and it's so fun i definitely see a lot of similarities to the bachelor and i stopped watching the franchise years ago but from what i have heard i feel like charlie is supposed to be like colton right he's the one who came out and i feel like if he had the romance with the producer i don't know maybe he did um this would be the story dev is not usually the handler for the bachelor but he usually is for the princesses all the ladies because this is supposed to be like a happily ever after prince charming type of thing so charlie's the prince charming but dev is the only one who seems to be able to handle him so he was reassigned he's doing a really good job he gets frustrated as anybody would but charlie also because he's with dev all the time and he now has to live with dev during the show to get to know him and get him to calm down and learn his mannerisms they're getting to know each other really well and dev is really the only person that charlie can talk to he has a lot of anxiety he is diagnosed with ocd as well and he feels really uncomfortable talking about that stuff and a lot of the contestants don't feel like mental health is something that they can talk about on the show and it is possibly something that the producers are cutting out i kind of like that they have the parts um saying like this is the episode this is when it aired the scene and the location and what is being said and like what parts are being cut out not me in front of the bathroom but yesterday i read so much of charm offensive i fell asleep on the train but i read 230 pages of this honestly if i didn't have work i could have finished this in the whole day and bachelor like that whole franchise is something that i outgrew but i think this is so sweet i really love dev and how both charlie and dev give each other something that no one else has which i guess like always happens in a romance but i kind of love that like they both understand each other's mental health needs i think this is great maybe a little bit of a warning of like high anxiety i feel like this weekend vlog is going so much better than my weekly vlogs i have about four rolls of film to go develop so coda and i are going to go to yardley photo studio and because it's around chinatown we might get some good bites No montage because, you know, vlogging in public, but we got Gongsha. What is this? The milk peach beautiful milk, milk plums, peach, peach slush with no, they didn't have the star jelly. 
We went to Goncha to get their famous roasted buns and then shrimp rice noodles and now we're waiting for VV chicken. Oh, that is so zoomed. Hello. Yesterday, um, I got my film developed. I usually get them printed, which Coda thought I would be doing, but I only wanted to get them digitized and just print out the ones that I want. Coda has one of the newer Max. He didn't bring his dongle because why? So we ended up walking to Best Buy to sneak use a PC to look at some photos. They turned out really great. We went to a bar that we've been wanting to try, ended up hanging out with a friend, went to another bar, got some expensive ass halal. What the fuck? But that also means that I didn't read as much as I wanted to, but that's usually how Saturdays go. Maybe if I can read during my commute, I can read this. I wish that it really only took me one day to read this because it was so easy to read and it's just that enjoyable. I feel like the conflict was always kind of really obvious because Charlie wasn't out yet or didn't know he was gay. He's also on a show where he's supposed to be engaged to a woman by the end and it's written in Deb's contract for his work that he can't date the talent. I see the conflict or like it being that Charlie is like oh I can't do this anymore I can't be on the show there's a whole thing there's a whole fallout he gets sued for millions of dollars but he still wants to be with Dev Koda and I are also headed out to Omakase Sushi Lunch to Shin East we've been recommended it by multiple co-workers I'm really excited because we've never gone to a sushi omakase together I look super pale how is Shin East Sushi Lunch? Sucked. Okay. How was lunch? It was very good. Yeah, it was really good. Especially for a price of like 69 per person. It was fabulous. And we were able to sit like right in front of the chef. So that was like a fun experience. And they also like picked up that we were Japanese. They weren't, but they would say like some stuff to us and it was pretty nice. Very intimate and only seats 10. And we'd definitely be back. It's really close by to where we stay in the East Village. So definitely an amazing location and a good find. Highly recommend. Last night, I finished The Charm Offensive by Alison Cochran. I had like less than 100 pages left. I'm giving it four stars. I think it was really cute, really enjoyable. It's very queer, this book. They all needed to have that community because they all were kind of closeted in their own way. And being able to have open conversations about anything and everything, knowing that it was a safe place for them and kind of just bonded them more. And I really liked that. Because I wasn't yet tired, I started Girls of Storm and Shadow by Natasha Nyan, which is the sequel to Girls of Paper and Fire. And I'm hoping that I can finish it by tomorrow because tomorrow I leave for Spain and I want to bring a new book for vacation even if I most likely won't read that much. I don't want to give away too much just because it is a sequel. Paper Girls, who are the lowest cast in this fantastical world of Ikara, this series contains scenes of violence and self-harm and references to sexual abuse and trauma recovery. So those are the trigger warnings which are provided at the beginning of this book. The lowest cast is Paper and then it's Steel Cast who are human- Papers are humans, fully human. Steel Cast are humans endowed with partial animal demon qualities and then the Moon Cast are fully demon and they're like at the top of the chain. And this one, Lei, is the Moon Chosen. She is part of the Paper Cast who managed to do what no one else could, confronting the demon. King. I feel like that's all I can give away without ruining the first book. I'm just about all packed up and ready to go, but I'm still reading this book and I'm a little bit afraid that I'm not going to finish in time. I have edited everything up to here. Actually, no, I correct myself. I'm not too worried that I'll I won't finish the book. I'm more worried that I won't, I'll finish the book and won't have enough time to edit and get this up and export it and stuff like that. So... I might have to end this prematurely. I made it in time. Um, so I'm gonna fin- I've just finished Girls of Storm and Shadow and I think I'm giving it maybe three and a half, three point seven five stars because the story is definitely coming along and the end of the cliffhanger obviously keeps me very intrigued and I will put the next book if it's out already on hold once I come back from my trip so that it doesn't like arrive while I'm away. It's a sequel, I can't say much, but let me come back with a page count. For this vlog, I read exactly 1,350 pages which is more than I read in over a week 
long vlog last week that's amazing especially with this being like a kind of a weekend vlog and i definitely had some good reads i read night buzz by zwoma which i did not read aquacorn cove by katie o'neill which was four stars ghosted in la volume 2 by cena grace which is three or 3.5 the charm offensive by allison cochran which i gave four stars and girls of storm and shadow by natasha nan which was 3.75 i hope you all enjoyed i'm going to go off have a wonderful time in spain hopefully and i will see you all next time thank you so much for watching bye